Uh, all right. <clears throat> Am I still focused? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Cooking Without Looking TV show. I'm your host, Alan Preston. Today, we have a special guest who came to America from Cambodia when she was just seven years old. She'll prepare her Cambodian egg rolls. And Annette, you're in the kitchen today, right? Yes, I am. Yes? Yes. I know you are. And you're going to prepare something called your delicious corn curry chowder, right? Ah, uh, yes. My, sorry, my phone just went out. It just is ringing. So, yes, Alan, I'm going to be preparing the um, corn chowder curry. It's just the added ingredient to get it, give it an extra uh, punch. But more so, I'm going to show you how to make milk out of walnuts that will add to the soup. So I look forward to doing that. That sounds interesting. Well, I'm sure everyone wants to stick around for those two extraordinary recipes. And Sylvia Stinson Perez is also here with us today to provide extra cooking tips if you are blind or visually impaired. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, let's see, where are we here, Annette? Yeah, Alan, thank you. Um, and today we have a great, really interesting guest. Her name is Savin Ven. She comes all the way from Cambodia. Welcome, Savin. How are you today? Thank you. Um, I'm Saban? doing great. How about y'all? Good. We're yes. doing wonderful. Um, I understand you came here from Cambodia when you are only seven years old. I want yes. you to tell me a little bit about yourself, about your vision, how you lost your sight, and also about your important organization. Okay, well, um, like as you said before, I came in 1979 at the age of seven, landed in Oregon um, due to, you know, for refugee asylum just because of the war in Cambodia at the time. Um, now here presently, I am a mother of three daughters, 12 grandchildren, um, wow. Also the president of the Visually Impaired Blind Society, where I'm busy. We've been around for about seven years now. Um, I lost my vision about 10 years ago due to diabetic retinopathy. Um, and VIGS is a nonprofit located in Atlanta, Georgia. One of our, um, our vice presidents here, Tony Asbury. Um, hey, sis. <laughs> um, you know, thanks to them and their hard work and dedication. You know, we um, our mission is to pretty much to help promote independence, productivity, um, help with financial resources as well as educational, so that those who are blind, visually impaired, who lost their vision, can live a more fulfilling life. You know, um, semblance to a normal life before vision loss. Um, we believe that mental health is a very important aspect because when you lose your vision, especially like myself who lost my vision ten years ago at the age of forty-one, you know, you're so used to seeing and doing things and everything. All of a sudden now, you know, you, you can't do it anymore. You can't drive. You can't do it. You depend on people. So, you know, we promote independence. And so um, the best way that we figure is to help with um, just social events and activities to bring them outside of the house. Because when you stay in the house, you know, all you're looking at is, well, you, you can't see anything. So you're pretty much just stuck behind the house. And a lot of people do believe that they are stuck behind the house. But we, we're here to tell them that, no, we can still do things. We travel. You know, we have big fundraising events. We do um, social events like parties and things like that. Just get together um, to bring them outside of the house. So that way um, it helps with the mental um, aspect of their well-being, as well as, you know, the physical. Because you want to get out and do things and, you know, just be a part of the community. And that's what we strive to do. Wow, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure, because it would be scary to travel when you're visually impaired or blind, but when you have all the support around you, I mean, the sky's mm -hmm. the limit. And that's so yes, important. It and it's yes, such it a is. good organization that you started. Did you tell us a little bit about your blindness? How did that happen? Yes, so uh, diabetes, do diabetic rhinopathy. And, okay. you know, slowly um, my right eye first happened to my right eye where I lost 
my di my uh, retinas detached. So they couldn't save that one. So they tried to save my left eye. I had about total of three surgeries and then that's where I am now. I'm totally blind due to after the third surgery and I went in for the fourth surgery and still they couldn't figure out why I'm blind. My retinas are actually still attached. So they don't they don't understand why I'm not seeing anything. Wow. Uh, yeah, then it wouldn't be unusual. Maybe you get a miracle, you know? We believe in miracles. Never know, you know, <laughs> you can only pray, right? Oh. Well, how's your diabetes doing? Do you have that under control? <laughs> yes, it's under control. And I just had, a, actually, I was um, also on dialysis um, for about six and a half years. Uh, and I was blessed to get my uh, kidney transplant about four, four years ago. Um, so, you know, it's it's hard with with having the kidney transplant with the medication and everything else, um, you know your sugar spikes and things like that because of the medication and, and things like that. So it was a battle. It's still a battle to, uh, you know, keep right. the sugar under control. Right, right. You have a you have a really good good attitude about it, Savin. I'm so Thank you. <laughs> so happy to have you here. I'm so excited because you're going to do your Cambodian egg rolls, right? Yes. You want to yes. Why that's one oh, of your favorite spring rolls? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're spring rolls then, right? Spring rolls. Well, I spring rolls. Yeah, it's just a difference between the shells, really. Fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. how did you come about choosing this recipe? Is it one of your favorites? Yeah, it's one of my favorites and one of my popular ones. So. Yeah, it's popular. <laughs> so it, it becomes your favorite, right? So yeah. Let's, yeah. Go ahead, let's go ahead and get started on that recipe today. Look forward okay. to it. All right. You could describe, I, I lost the picture totally on my phone, but I'm listening carefully as most of our audience is listening because they're blind or visually impaired. Not everybody, but yes. um, most of our people watching are blind or visually impaired. So, so I'm going to be just descriptive just because I yeah, said that. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I appreciate that to do a descriptive. Okay. So I have just finished prepping, cutting up the little cabbage and the carrots and the chopped up onions. And you can see the little shredded cabbage here. I'm not sure you can see it right here. Um, and I threw it all in a bowl. And I'm gonna add these vermicelli. Um, these are the mushrooms that I had soaked and it's ready to go. So I'm throwing that into the bowl along with the cabbage, onion. And I'm using um, ground chicken today, a pound, because I'm only making 25 egg rolls. Um, you can do two, but you'll just have thicker, you know, thicker egg rolls or spring rolls as you want it. These are the vermicelli noodles. I soaked, they're nice and soft now. And I did cut them so it won't be long and st too stringy. So I'll throw all that in there. <clears throat> now I got my sauce, the marinade that actually seasons the you know the filling. So basically, um, I put two teaspoons of fish sauce, a uh, teaspoon of salt, like maybe a teaspoon and a teaspoon of sugar. You know, everything is based on your taste. I do everything by air, so I'm just kind of like. Get into where people can kind of just estimate, but everything is based upon <clears throat> your preference and your taste. If you like a more I salt. Agree. I agree. That's a good point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's an art and it's a thing. Sure. Yeah. So add less or more depending on your taste. And um, so, and then I just put a little bit of uh, black pepper, garlic, um, powder. So then I'm just going to take my hands here and marinate it really well. If you want all the seasonings, you know, just go for it. Dig in. <laughs> like meatloaf, <laughs> pretty much. You know, you have to marinate meatloaf and some of that. So it's basically that. And you do it till you feel like everything is saturated in the marinade. And then Sabine, when you this is Sylvia. I have a, a, a quick question. You know, uh -huh. um, well, one question is, are the, the is the vermicelli pre-cooked? Or you said you soaked it. And then my other question is, kind of what proportion of veggies to meat to the vermicelli pasta do you okay. use? Is it like a third, a third, a third, or what is it? So basically, I would say, okay, so I use one pound. So I do about three, because the vermicelli noodles come in, in little rolls. That, it comes in a packet. I use about three of those rolls, more because I'm making more. But said I'm only making 25, I use three. And you soak it in warm water until it gets soft. Then you just cut it up. Um, the black mushrooms that I showed you guys, it comes in a bag pre-made. Pre so I would say about one small bag of it. I use a big one, like I said, if I make more. So it just depends. Um, 
and it comes in big bags and small bags. You know, if you just make it 25, and it's like I say, depending on your taste, how much you want in there and stuff. But I would say, yeah, about a third. You're, you're pretty much on target, a third. And then cabbage, if I'm using a whole head of cabbage, I use half of the cabbage. Mm -hmm. And then like maybe two, two large carrots shredded, and you could use the cheese grater and use the big, you know, the big ones, so the big grater. So it won't be so tiny. And <laughs> this is a tip of mine. If you're not good with knives, the best thing to do is you're not, because you, you have to cut these, you know, you have to cut your cabbage really thin. And your onions, you have to chop it up and your pears as well. But so sometimes when I'm in a hurry and I don't really want to spend time, you know, cutting out cabbage and carrots and stuff like that, the shortcut is if you go to the store and buy you the coleslaw mix, that one that has carrots already in it, you just get a couple bags of that for 25, for if you're making 25. You add more if you're making more, but that's the shortcut for the cabbage and the carrots. The onions, you, I, I think the onions, they do have some that's already cut up for you, but I like to use fresh ones because for me, when you cut up, you know, the onions already, you buy it, it kind of gets soggy and I, I don't like it. So mm -hmm. I cut my onions myself, but that's a shortcut tip if you don't want to sit there and cut your cabbage and, um, you know, do all the extra. So just buy you a couple bags of that coleslaw mix already with carrots in it. And you can use the one that has purple cabbage mixed in with the white cabbage, or you just want to use the regular one, that's fine. So I got it all mixed in. I'm about to roll you a couple. Um, and then I'm going to put it in the grease that's been preheating. And it, you have to make sure this grease is hot. Just like when you fry chicken, you know, to get that nice crispy, you know, sizzling. And it cooks it fast. Here's a thermometer. Steven, do you have a thermometer, a talking thermometer to let you know the temperature that you need? I don't use a thermometer. <laughs> so, I don't use How a do you thermometer. know it's hot enough? Um, sometimes I feel like I put my hand over the pot to make sure it's, you know, you can feel the heat. But sometimes what I do is I take the, the egg roll and I stick it into the, you know, the grease. And if you hear sizzling, you know it's done. Good point. I mean, you know that the heat is nice and hot. Right, right. Yeah. Good tip. Right. Yeah, and then also, guys, um, the tip to cooking the egg rolls is, um, depending how thick your egg rolls are or spring rolls, it usually take about five to eight, depending on, like I said, how hot your grease is, how big your egg rolls are, um, and how brown, golden brown, you want the shells to be. Right. All that plays into the fact of how long you cook it. So the longer you cook it, the more golden brown it is. Um, the secret to knowing when the egg rolls are cooked, when you first put it in the heat, it will sink um, it, into the grease. The egg rolls will sink. So it'll go down to the bottom. But as soon as it gets done, it'll start to float up. All right. So then you just leave it in there, depending on how long you want your egg rolls. I mean, how brown or golden you want your egg rolls to be. Right. But as soon as it starts. That tip. I love that. Yeah, as soon as the floating, floating. How do you tell? How do you tell that they're floating since you can't see? And like I can't see anything to know. Like I couldn't see if something was floating. How do you tell that? So when you um when you put it in, you you know it'll sink, right? You know that it's sinking now. Mm -hmm. But give it about four or five minutes after you do it. When you think that is about ready, you go there. You can take your like your tongs or your fork. Uh -huh. You start feeling it's floating. It's not touching the bottom anymore. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what temperature are you? Is this on high, medium, low? Yeah, so I preheat it on medium heat for a good, mm -hmm. you know, 10 minutes, right? To get mm -hmm. that nice hot grease going. Yeah. Or you can put it on high. Um, what I do is I put it on high as well. And that way it heats it up faster, but then I turn it down to like a number six, the medium. So I use a gas stove. Yeah. Yeah, and I leave it on medium while I'm frying it. Because right now the okay. grease is like super hot. Right. Um, and I just want to show everybody the egg roll shells that I use is this one here. Everybody see it? No, uh, so what, you have to say what it is, Sabine. So it's the egg roll shell, it's square. Um, the brand is White Chen. You can get this at Asian farmers market, any and you know, Asian or freezing in a frozen part, right? So it's clear. So what I'm gonna do, I already opened it. I have to peel these shells, so you have to put the sticks together in a, a 25 pack. Okay. 
but I'm about to peel one and then roll. So this is the shell, it's, it's square, but you're gonna put it on your plate and each point, because it's a square, you have to go, you put it to where like one point is facing north. So it's gonna be north, east, south and west, right? So each point, just like you're looking at the, the thingy there. So each point is like one point going north, one south. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, um, I had a spoon, I don't know what I did. So I'm gonna do like a spoonful of the filling. Take your spoon and just dig up a spoonful of that filling. Not too much, just enough. Just like a, a spoonful, like I said. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it right where the bottom tip is, like just one that's towards you. And just kind of like, um, you know, put it right there to the tip. And then you take the pointed tip and then you hold it over your meat, your filling, and you just start rolling. So it's like a diagonal. You have it like a diagonal. Yes, um, more okay. like, um, like a diamond, almost like where the points yep. are all facing. Right. Yes. Okay, so then you roll, and then you get to the center where the other two points are. You fold those two points in, hold it in, and then you hold it, and then you fold it. So you just keep rolling. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna take your you're gonna take your finger, dip it into the egg wash. The scrambled egg is one egg. And all you do is you just pretty much just scramble the eggs and just leave it in because that's what seals the egg rolls and it seals it better than water. You could use water if you don't have egg. Um, and you just roll it until you, you know, and then just do it like that, roll it. And then it's gonna look like a little burrito. <laughs> so, uh, Sabine, see, this is Alan. I have a quick question. Show it, I don't know if anybody who can see it can see. So you see it? It's like a little burrito. Right, so I'm fix this one. So I roll this one. I'm put it in the green. You hear it chiseling? That's how you know it's ready to go. So it's sizzling now. And then once that's done, I'll take it out. So it should be. It sends it nice and hot. It shouldn't take me that long at all for that egg roll. Savin, do you need any kind of special pan for this, or it's any a, kind of? You know, you can use stuff. your. So what I have noticed is the, um, you can use it in an air fryer if you want to do it that way where it's less grease. But I use it in a pot or a deep skillet, right? You want to make sure there's enough grease so when you drop it in there, it sinks to the bottom and covers the egg roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how you, can you know. Use that's why so that's a good alternative. Yes, you can use it in an air fryer. What you want to do is, because, um, you know, chicken, pork, you know, they all have their own grease, you know, their own fat in it. So... But most people, what they do is you can do it in the oven as well, but you want to rub like olive oil, a little olive oil on it. Mm -hmm. That way, um, you know, just to get a little bit of that, you know, that little little um, oil just to make it fry better. Is but that like, after the egg wash? That's after the egg wash? Yeah, after you oil? finish it. Mm -hmm. yep. That's when you're about to cook it is when you put a little, mm -hmm. rub the uh, mm -hmm. olive oil just lightly around, you know, the egg roll. So I just made another one, see, so, and trust me, when you first do it, it's gonna come out different sizes and everything, <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's, it'll be all right. Yes, practice makes perfect with that, right? Yeah, practice makes perfect, yeah. you know, so I'm just making, and also if you wanna make it, and if you, let's say you don't cook the whole thing right now, what you can do, um, you can freeze it in like a Ziploc freezer bag, I usually do about five in each bag, that way it'd be a snack. You know, when I want a little bit, I can just, you know, as a snack. Mm -hmm. So right now it's not floating yet, so it's still cooking. I just checked it. And I also have um, like a plate. Um, I put some, uh, uh, what you call it, paper towels on it, so it kind of absorbs the grease when you take it out. Oh, good. If, so you, if you cook it in the oven, Sabine, how long does it take? For, uh, from what now, sorry? If you were to cook it in the oven and bake it, like how long would that take? Well, with the oven, I believe it's gonna take a little longer. Um, I would I would say, depending on your oven, you know, cause everybody's oven temperature is different. I would yeah. do like three, uh, 400 for like at least 15. 
And you can tell by the color, the golden brown. And so or does it, so if you can't see the golden brown, if you touch it, is it gonna feel like more crispy kind of? Yeah, uh -huh, crispy. yeah. But I would do at least at least 15 to 30 minutes, depending on where you're at, your oven temperature and all that. But the best thing to do is you can find it like, you know, like a, the deep fryers that people have for their fried chicken and stuff. All right, I think my egg roll, I think this egg roll is done. Because it is nice and close over here. That was quick. So say then if you if you use them as a snack later, of course you put them in the baggie and freeze them after they've been cooked, right? Not after no, you see No, you freeze it before. Oh, before you fry and then you have to refry your snack. Yeah, then you just have to fry it. And I would like take it out. You want to fry it. That's why you have to be careful when you fry it when it's they're, they're still frozen. You know what I'm saying? But that's when you want to do it because if you don't, it's gonna get soggy and the shells will tear. Oh, so okay. once you slice, they put by, and then you take it out, you know, defrost it a little bit so that way, you know, at least it won't stick together because it will. And then once you do it, um, you deep fry it while the grease, like while it's still kind of frozen. So, okay. but it, it won't pop like you think it will. All right, okay. so it's done. This one is done and it's nice and crispy, I can tell. I don't know if you can see it right here. For those who can see. So you hear the crispy shell? That's how it sounds. So this one is done. And I just turned off my grease because I'm gonna roll these and keep it for later. <laughs> but I do um wanna cut one up so you can see how it looks on the inside. Um here. Cut this one. It's nice and hot, so careful. The best time to eat it when it's nice and hot, and just you know, they nice and crispy. Okay, and here go last. It's nice, cooked on the inside. You can feel the noodles, you know, things. So I have to taste it because I did not taste my marinade, y'all. <laughs> I know it's salty enough. All right, perfect. I've done it so long, it's like, it's kind of, uh, what you call it, second nature. So that's it, guys. That's how you Very make good. egg rolls. <laughs> uh, Sabine, I have just a couple of quick questions. Maybe sure. I missed a couple of things there. That uh, egg wash you were talking about, do you use that any place other than to seal the outside of the uh, egg roll, uh, spring roll? You said one of the egg? The egg wash. Yeah. What about it? Uh, do you use that any place other than to seal the end of the egg roll? No, that's it. That's the only purpose that it has. Okay. And that's simply just an egg and you beat it all up with the yolk and the white together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just one okay. egg. Just My throw second it in there. question, because I may have missed something here. You pre cook the uh, chicken before you uh, put it in the egg roll? No, I don't. You can. You can marinate, like once you marinate it, if you want to pre-cook it, just stir it. Like what I do, if I pre-cook it, I throw in my protein and throw all the vegetables and then use the seasoning. And then that way you can cook it. You can taste to see if you need to add more seasoning. That's the best way to do it if you're not. But like the if you're starting it, out. Okay. Yeah. If the you're starting out, you might want takes, to. Okay, the amount of time it takes to cook in the uh, oil is enough time to uh, thoroughly cook the chicken, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. Like I said, it's that. You see how That's fast that one took? It only took like a few minutes, right? Because it's yeah. The uh, I, I, I don't see well enough to see, but again, I'm guessing that the egg, the excuse me, spring rolls are approximately an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half in diameter. Mm-hmm. Not that big at all. Like I said, you can make it big or small, depending. Some people make it like this, like little baby ones that are like um, the size of the length of your pinky and about the same um, size. Uh, um, this one is more like, mm, if you, like you said, about an inch in diameter and about, about three inches long. I'm going to guess the smaller the diameter, the faster they cook. 
and the quicker yes. they rise to the top, right? Yep. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is not true. I, I had a question at the very beginning and I missed it. Tell me uh -huh. the difference between a spring roll and an egg roll. Okay, so spring rolls, you get these thin shells like I'm, I'm using now. And when you fry it up, it gets crispy. Okay. And the, the egg rolls are more the chewy ones that you get from like when you go through like the Chinese restaurant. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Spring rolls are crispier. Thank you. I will make sure I order spring rolls next time. I like the crispy. Yes, I, I do too. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So it is delicious, y'all. So try it out. Let me know what you all think. <laughs> and like I said, seasonings are based upon your preference. So add more or less to your liking. Thank you, Savan. That was a beautiful presentation. Very clear, articulate, and very excited. I mean, you're very excited about this recipe. Thank you so much for sharing it. Anything else? Anybody want to add? Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? I think that's it for me. <laughs> Thanks again. I hope you, you come back. Well. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Sabine. Well, Annette, now it's your turn. And it yes. sounds like you have a real fall treat for us. Well, first of all, can you see my baby here that I'm holding, baby Gracie? Well, I can't, but I believe our sighted audience can. Yeah, it's black and white, my little, my I shouldn't say puppy. I'm just sharing here, her with you because she's on her last leg. She's oh. 16. Yeah, and she'll be the last time she's joining us. She's not a guide dog, but she gives you so much love. And she had an epileptic episode last night. And uh, we're having a lot of things going on in this house lately. The new grandbaby, my two dogs are sick. So I'm going to say goodbye to her, and I'll start cooking for you. Hold on. Okay. okay. And All a right. new granddaughter, too. Yeah, she's upstairs now with my sister. Thankfully, my sister came by to watch her. She, I think she's starting to heave a little bit. She's been very cranky. And also, I have to admit, the recipe that I'm making for you, I made for her mom for lunch yesterday. And I think I added a little too much curry. As Savin was saying, you have to put the cur you know, spices in according to your taste. And I learned a big lesson just not to put too much from, for my taste. But I think it affected her, my daughter-in-law's breast milk. So we had a little issue with that. But I think she's feeling better now. But I'm excited to tell you about my recipe. It is a corn chowder, it's a curry corn chowder. And it's so easy to make. And it's so comforting and delicious. But first of all, to put in that recipe, I'm going to make some plant milk. How many times have you gone to your fridge and maybe you've been out of milk, regular traditional milk, or you don't have any almond milk, or you don't have any coconut milk, and you, you have some almonds in your fridge, or you have some walnuts in your fridge, you can actually make a milk out of it. I'm going to show you how to do that first, and then I'll proceed to the recipe. This is just a container that I have. Um, that fits a cheesecloth. I don't know if anybody's ever used a cheesecloth. It's just a very sheer mesh that I put around this container to grab the, uh, the walnuts after I grind them. But this has to fit nicely. Usually I don't even have to use a container. You could just hold it up. Now it's not fitting. And if you don't have a cheesecloth, which I got on Amazon, it's pretty easy. You could use a stocking. <laughs> Does anybody wear stockings anymore? But you could no. use a stocking. No, not I really, wash right? It first. <laughs> yeah, really. Or you robbed a bank before. I don't know. So what I have here is a cup of walnuts. And these have been soaking overnight. And the reason you soak your nuts, I don't want to make a joke here, but you have to soak your nuts so the protein in the nuts is more digestible to your body. It's better. You don't have to but I like to do it. They're cleaner and they're ready to go. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a cup of walnuts into the Vitamix. For every cup you wanna add, every cup of nuts, you're gonna add approximately two to three cups of water. So I'm pouring in one. You Dose. have a one cup con uh, container that's full, or one cup when it's level full? 
What do you, I'm what do you mean? ask your question because uh, that's how I do it. I, I know exactly. Oh, you mean to put the one cup of water? Right. I got a one cup and I got a two cup. And when it's level full and goes over the top, I know it's exactly right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or you could, yeah, put your finger there and feel it. Yeah. I can luckily, this is a perfect one cup. I don't like those measuring cups that have two cups and all these fancy things. This is strictly one cup and I could actually see with this one. And I'm going to put eh, about two and three quarters. I like my milk a little bit more, a little thicker. And then you can add to this. It's totally optional. You can add a dash of salt because, you know, when you buy milk from the store, the plant milks, they do have salt in them. But I don't put salt. I don't put a sweetener. I don't put anything. But you can do whatever you want. One time I put some dates in there that I had soaked in hot water to make them soft. And then I put about four dates in the walnut milk, so it became a little sweet. So if you excuse me for a moment, I have to go over to the side and run this because we have all our electronics in the closet. It's like a garage for electronics, so they're hidden. So I'll be right back, Alan, so fill in the space. For I me. will do my very best. <laughs> you know, that really sounds great. I wonder if you couldn't put a little bit of fruit or something in there. I kind of like uh, uh, cherries and uh, blueberries, and okay. you could put that in there, too. You could put whatever you want in there. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to turn on the Vitamix. It might be a little noisy, so I apologize. <laughs> right. Are you? Do you have a little saying that you go through that gives you the right amount of time? I don't know. Uh, I, I have a Nutribullet. In fact, I just bought one recently. I wonder if that's very similar to what you have. Um, but hey, uh, yes, I, I used to use almond milk. Um, I found out it doesn't mix real well with jello pudding. Uh, oh. And I went back to using regular cow's milk. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I won't hold it against you. I won't hold it against you, Alan. Uh, you. I kind of like jello pudding, especially the chocolate stuff and the butter too. Milk works great for that. What, Sylvia? Excuse me? Um, he's me? talking about making pudding, and I'm yeah. telling him that coconut milk works great for pudding. Okay, mm -hmm. so thick. All right. Pudding. Okay, so I mixed this for about whoa, less than a minute. I don't know whoever can see, it's very white right now. And I have my container with my cheesecloth in it. And I'm gonna pour the walnut mixture, it's all liquidy, through a cheesecloth to avoid any grittiness from the walnut. Another important thing is make sure your hands are very, 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 very clean when you start to squeeze this walnut milk. It's kind of like milk in a cow. I, I have never milked a cow, but <laughs> I assume that's what it feels like. Now, I don't have a proper container today to pour it in, so I want to do it over a larger surface. So I took a bowl. I'm going to remove the cheesecloth, and I'm going to squeeze the mixture. So you're going to squeeze it to go through the cheesecloth into the bowl. If you guys can see it's kind of fun. This is a great thing to do with with kids, with children. I can't wait till my granddaughter gets bigger. And we could play in the kitchen. But I'm squeezing it. You could probably hear it dripping into the bowl. Make sure I get all that liquid out. And this is what we're going to use in our recipe to thicken. And within a couple of days, if you leave it in a jar, let's say. It's going to thicken up, so it's okay to add like three cups of water to one cup of walnuts. Okay, and I still have some more in the container, so I'm going to pour the rest of the mixture into a cheesecloth again, and I'm going to squeeze it again. I bet you wish you could do this. It's so much fun. I want to milk a cow now. Well, back on the farm in Minnesota, I milked many cows. Even though we really? had chickens, our neighbors had cows. When the electric oh, went, you had to do it by hand. I went and helped. You did that a lot then. You have well, experience. Too, too much. Too much? Okay. Well, I won't and invite that, you over. There's yes, a so question in the chat. 
sure. Um, about replacing milk with um, coconut milk. Um, and I I regularly use coconut milk and, and I know Alan just mentioned almond milk. The thing is, they are not as thick. And so Annette, can you talk about maybe how you can, when you're making a recipe that normally calls for, you know, cow's milk, how you can ensure that it's thick enough or what do you do to, you know, to make it work? Well, you know, I haven't really worried about it. It always seems to work. Um, it seems to work great. Any of the milks that you make with nuts fresh, like I'm doing now, they always thicken up after a day or so. So you just kind of test it with your recipe because I didn't put that much last time I made the, the corn chowder. And then, but the next day, the, the, the soup was very thick. So I added some more. So you kind of have to judge it by stirring it. If you can't see, I stir it with a spoon. I could tell by putting the spoon in the pan that it's thick. And then I just add more. I, I don't have an exact formula for how that will be done, but you just kind of judge it according to personal preference, but I don't know if that's helpful. But anyway, I have a funnel here and I put it in this jar and I'm going to pour the walnut milk. Now that it has been strained and it's so nice and pure and it's even nice and white. If you, whoever can see that, it's, it's white. And you don't need a big container. I don't make a lot at once. This makes a, this makes about four to five servings of eight ounces. So it's not too bad. So here we have our milk ready to go for our recipe. Who's excited for our corn chowder? You have to like corn and you have to like curry for this. All right, so I'm gonna get started over here with the corn chowder. It's so quick and so easy. First, what we're going to do is put about, I'd say about three heaping tablespoons of onions in a pan. I don't use that big a pan because this is a serving for just two people. You, uh, um, but that you've already pre-chopped those onions, right? I did pre-chop, but I didn't have to be perfect on. I'm glad you asked that question because what I'm going to do is saute these a little until they're translucent. And then I'm going to put it in my little magic bullet and kind of liquefy it as well to go into the recipe. I'll explain in a minute because we're going to keep some liquid corn. We're going to liquefy a little bit of corn and then we're also going to add full kernels. So I'm going to turn my burner on. This isn't the easiest stove to know, but it's not bad because I've learned where the high and low and you know they make the burners they have two levels they have a smaller mm -hmm. level it was difficult at first but no any anyway, kitchen is important yeah exactly you know in your kitchen to saute these you can use olive oil olive oil or avocado oil what I do is I put a little bit of avocado oil because avocado oil has a high heat resistance it doesn't destroy the molecules it's good for you Put a little bit of that, but if you're someone that doesn't, it's probably about tablespoon. If you're someone that doesn't like to use oil, I know there's people out there that are sugar-free, oil-free, and salt-free. That's not me. I use a little bit. So I put a little bit of oil and I saute it, but if you feel like it's not enough, add a little bit of the plant milk in here or water. You can add a little bit of water. Hold on, I messed up. I want to clean up this spot here. I like to clean as I go because it makes it so much easier. It's important to clean as you go and put things away as you go, right, Annette? Because well, yeah. then, then you don't get confused or have a mess. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm always confused. I'm blonde. What do you want? Okay. <laughs> so this mixture is onion and garlic. And then I add a big mixing spoonful, two big mixing spoons full of corn. I don't really measure it out. You could add more, you could add less. I'm just softening this up a little before we add it to the magic bullet. It's gonna, it's gonna saute for about, you know, five minutes or so. Is that frozen corn in that? 
Okay, that's another good point. Thank you for reminding me. You can use a frozen a whole bag of frozen corn. I think there's about the last one I bought had about 13 ounces in it. This one today I'm using actually canned corn, organic canned corn that I get at Target. I love this. It's so easy. And you know, corn doesn't have to cook much at all. Mm -hmm. So to this mixture, as they're sauteing, let's add our spices on here. More spices. We got the onion. We got the garlic. We got the corn. And now I had told you three teaspoons of curry. But since that, I apologize. I changed that to two teaspoons. Yay. <laughs> I think I got sick on the curry. I don't know if I got sick on the curry or what, but I'm just going to add two teaspoons of curry this time. Can it's you a little... add more curry later on? Oh, of course. Of course I you can add. So. Yeah, of course. You can add salt and pepper too for taste. I'll add that later on. And you can even add this curry later on. You don't have to add the curry while they're sauteing. I have always found that it's easier to add a little in than to try to take a little out. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's a great <laughs> that point. That was only a joke. <laughs> You're so right. You're so right. And now instead of salt, I'm using the cocoa. I'm going to take this off the burner for a second. Liquid aminos. They just have more nutrients. It's like a soy sauce. And they're, it's called Bragg's is the brand. And I add about three tablespoons of this to the mixture. Ooh, you know what? I had my tablespoon upside down. So when I tried to fill it, it really didn't fill. It's, it's, it went, <laughs> okay, that's one of the things when you're visually impaired. Okay, so one, two, and three. Of course, it's like a, Savin says, it's to taste. You could add less or you can add more. Now, where'd my walnut milk go? Here it is. I'm going to add some walnut milk now, about a cup. I already had some in here. Let's add about a cup there so we could put this in the magic bullet and it won't get all stiff. We need some liquid to make it work. Okay, so I'm stirring it up. Put a couple more seconds on here. Make sure the onions and the garlic are cooked up a little bit. So I know you might be saying, well, I guess it's a good dish for fall. And we are we in fall yet? When does fall start? The next week. Next oh, week. Right. Okay, so this is a good fall dish. It's got the correct colors. I just want to wipe up as I go here. Got a little bit of curry on my stove. Okay, yeah, it's exciting. I always thought cornbread was sort of an all-year-round thing. Uh, well, I'm not making cornbread. I'm, <laughs> I'm making corn chowder. Corn chowder, I'm sorry. Yes, corn chowder. I always thought corn chowder was kind of an all-year-round thing. Anytime hey, you it know, cold outside. I yeah, I think it could be. I eat soup in the summer. Of course, our AC is down to, like, what, 76 every time? So. Oh, it's cold inside, okay. Exactly. Some people say, well, you can't eat soup. You can't should eat soup in the summer. I'm going to eat whatever I want to eat. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now that it's sautéed, this is just part of it, and that's it. And then you pour it in to the... Magic bullet container. Oh, this one. You know what? If, you are, if you're making a bigger portion, you could use a blender or an immersion blender. Exactly. This is a small portion. In fact, mm -hmm. this container is a little bit small. Let me use. I would use the Vitamix, but like I said, my my Vitamix is in the in the garage, not the my house garage. But we call it a garage, mm -hmm. a closet where I don't have to display all my uh, appliances on the counter. They're all electrically hooked up inside the closet. Okay, so I'm adding all the sauteed onion, garlic, and two big, big spoonfuls of corn in the Nutribullet. Then I'm gonna put on the bottom part the blade. You can see that, some people can see that. It's like a light yellow. Put it on the Nutribullet. Excuse the noise. Go for it. 
Ja. So I'd say that's about 30 seconds or so. I love this Nutribullet for smaller, smaller recipes. But of course, like um, Sylvia said, you have a bigger portion just going to double, quadruple everything. So I'm pouring it back into the pan. Okay, let me get my back into the pan. Then I'm going to add the rest of the corn. Mm, this is going to be, this is hearty. You can serve this, we'll show you with chips or crusty bread. Put it back on the burner and we have to add, now I could feel that this is pretty thick. And you noticed earlier, I only added about half a cup of liquid. So now I'm going to add another cup, three quarters of a cup, more liquid to it. Is that your uh, walnut milk? That's the walnut milk that I made, yes. Okay. And of course, you know, you could use any milk. I'm, I'm a big, you know, I'm vegan like, 95% of the time. And if I run out of something, if I have nuts in the fridge, I'll make, make some milk with it. So I'm gonna add some pepper. And, and you know, an important thing to kind of mention and that and maybe you could even talk about is that different milks give it a different taste. Like I'm a big, I'm a big coconut milk person. I know and there it. is definitely a different flavor from coconut milk to almond milk to I actually am not even sure I've had walnut milk. So, oh, you haven't. You've never. You've missed something. And also, Brazil nut milk is delicious, but very mm. costly. Very, and has a lot of selenium in it. Okay, I'm going to taste this. And like you said, coconut milk would actually go good with this because mm -hmm. curry coconut. Coconut. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to taste a little bit of this. I'm a big taster. Some people don't taste your food. I I have to. Mm. All cooks taste their food in that. <laughs> My sister doesn't. My sister doesn't taste her food. Okay, it needs a little more aminos, which adds a little bit more sodium. And that's about it. Now, just cook it through a little bit. It's better if you can serve it like in a couple hours because all the ingredients marry into the soup and it becomes richer. Right now, it's not giving me that rich luxurious feeling that usually you get but I don't know if you can see this it's just right now it just looks like a yellow mixture I can't even see the corn but I'm going to add a little more curry I know I wasn't going to add a lot of curry okay so I'll just add another half a teaspoon I don't really taste the curry at all now, and when can you add, put this away in the refrigerator one. overnight and reheat it the next day and it'd be a lot better? Oh, it's even better then. Yeah, okay. it's even better. You know, I don't know, Sylvia might have an opinion on this. I always wondered, is it okay to put warm food or even hot food in the fridge? The only thing I read that said not to is it causes a higher electric bill because your fridge tries to cool things down but it doesn't affect the food. What do you think? Oh, I, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because I'm, I'm glad you read that somewhere because I always sit mine and let it cool down a bit because I just thought, I, I guess we always learned that, that you should let it cool. And, and I'm glad to hear you say you don't necessarily have to let it. Yeah, I mean, I read that just one place. I haven't done a lot of research. Okay, yet. I have no idea either. I, my habit is to let it cool. Yeah, me too. Because not, you think about cold, but just you know, lose the the massive heat. You know, mm -hmm. I would yeah, think it's a lot better to let it cool down at least to close to room temperature. Most let it cool. be left out for what at least thirty minutes, forty five minutes before there's any problem. Yeah, well, especially a, a hot soup, you could leave it out longer. Mm -hmm. But right, if you have a salad or something to that effect, well, that's different. So but I you have can another question too. You said you keep your nuts in the refrigerator. <laughs> well, my whole family's in the refrigerator. <laughs> get it? You get it? No, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I like to in Florida because of the heat and everything. I keep as much as I can fit in my refrigerator, but I haven't read about that. 
What I'm adding to my soup is some parsley for decoration. You just sprinkle a little bit of that on there for color. Mm -hmm. And also another thing you can add, which is fun, is a dash of hot sauce in the center. It's going to bring some color, some red color. And then I have some corn chips here. I found unsalted at Trader Joe's. If you could find big pieces, it's better. Right now I have a bunch of small pieces, but I just put it around the edges. Or you can use crusty bread. Nothing better than crusty bread that you put in your air fryer or your um, toaster. So I'm going to hold this up. I shut my burner off. It's still sizzling over here. But I'm going to hold the dish up. Put the corn chips around the edges. You got a little parsley in the middle. It's nice and creamy. And then when you scoop it up, you're going to get those pieces of corn that they love so well. Can you see that? Okay, who's sighted there that can see? Help me out here. I'm sure it looks If great. you can tilt it forward tilt it. a little bit towards the camera. Forward? Like that? Yes, ma'am. That's perfect. Oh, pretty soon it's going to spill out of here. Let me yes. just take No, those. that's good. That's I'm good. Yeah. That smells great, too. Hmm. Melissa? I, I'm not just saying this because yes. I made it. This is the simplest, easiest, quickest recipe you'll ever get. And, it doesn't well, even and then if you, if you, if you aren't going to use like the aminos thing you talked about, what's a substitute for that? Because that sounds like something hard to find. Yeah. No, you can find this at Walmart. They have at Walmart now, but the a substitute for this would be regular soy sauce or um, salt, just regular salt mm -hmm. or um, pink salt or Celtic mm -hmm. salt or now it's it's high in sodium, which is soy sauce is high in sodium. It has um, 310 milligrams per teaspoon, but all it has is the ingredients are vegetable protein from soybeans and water. So it does contain soy. And if you're allergic to soy, please don't use this. But as far as it gives you a little more, oh, I know this is exciting. It gives you 16 amino acids that you need for your body, like arginine and cycling, liacine and uh, tyrosine, all the scenes are in here. <laughs> there's, quite a, there's quite a few. So the purpose of using this would be to get some amino acids in your system, or you can use a mineral salt, like a pink salt, which will give mm -hmm. you a lot of minerals okay. also. So that's about it, guys. I hope you try it sometime. It's easy. It's quick. I even tried it with squash the other day because I didn't have corn. And it wasn't as good because it was frozen squash and there were little squares and the texture just wasn't the same. The corn is the best. So thank you guys for letting me present this. And I hope you enjoyed. Ciao. I Sounds great. So, did you have any uh, other questions? No, it sounds fabulous. Um, do we really have any does. questions from people in our audience today? We do. We have a comment uh, from Melissa. Melissa, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, I was literally just saying, yes, you do learn, uh, you know, at a younger age or whatnot that you are supposed to cool down the food before you, before you put it in the fridge. But it really doesn't matter. Your fridge can't gauge the temperature of everything that's in there. Um, so it doesn't run like an air conditioner where it stays cool, you know, when it feels like it's warm, something warm is in there. Um, it does change on its own, but as far as having to let things cool, you do not have to. Um, mm -hmm. and you were talking about keeping your, um, your nuts in the refrigerator. I personally keep them in the fridge, but, uh, also enjoy, making them last even longer and putting them in the freezer because mm -hmm. nuts have oils in them and they can turn rancid. Yeah, so I'll peanut see. butter, all of that is in the fridge for me. Mine never you. last long enough for it to get <laughs> 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 I have a nut for nuts. Yes, Sylvia. I don't blame you. It's they're, they're very habit forming and very easy. That's why they say just have a palm full a day. But if you you know eat out of the That's bag, what, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Savine does that. She has nuts as a snack all the time. <laughs> We're on the phone. I'm like, what are you? It's eating? a healthy I'm snack. <laughs> I, I have nuts every morning with my yogurt. A handful of walnuts. 
Easy to do. And that's omega threes with the walnuts. That's why I love them because I don't eat a I, lot of fish. I throw them in smoothies too. Yeah. In that well, why, yeah. Yeah, but why waste them in the smoothie when you could chomp on them? That's what I say. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I don't throw them out on the list when I take a mouthful of yogurt. I take a couple of nuts with it. And mm -hmm. and it's a great little breakfast in the morning before I go do a swim. It's crunchy. Yeah. All right. Well. I want to thank you, Annette, very much, and Sabine, Welcome. and Sylvia, thank and thank all of you in our audience today for joining us on the Cooking Without Looking TV show. Also, a special thank you to The Blind United for all of your support. If you'd like today's recipes, as well as recipes from past shows, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlooking.com tv.wordpress.com Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Alan, for being so articulate with that. Also, um, go to our, U excuse me, our YouTube channel. If you want to re-see this show, see Savine's recipe or my recipe, go to your YouTube channel, Cooking Without Looking, and you can see a lot of our different shows right on there. Thank you. And if you teach people who are blind or partially sighted, please feel free to use our show for your students. There's no charge for using them. And many teachers around the country, as well as nearly 70 other countries around the world, now use our Cooking Without Looking TV show to teach their students. Yes, and another good way to teach is through podcasts. And we have wonderful podcasts that Renee Rentmeester the creator and producer of the show does. And it's awesome. There's dozens and dozens. And you just get the podcast wherever you get your favorite podcast. It could be on um, Spotify or even Google or what have you. There's many, many um, locations to do that. So I hope you will go ahead and check out our podcast. Yeah, I think it's also available on uh, Alexa. In, 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 oh, in absolutely. Device. I'm, I'm partial to Google, but yeah, Alexis as well. <laughs> okay. And if you would like to donate to Vision World Foundation, and yeah, we hope you would, uh, to help us change the way we see blindness, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com and click on the link at the top of the page. Or for more information, please call area code 305-200-9104. Yes, thank you, Alan. So on behalf of, of all of us here at Cooking Without Looking, we're going to have another show in October. So I hope you show up for that. So we thank you from the bottom of our heart, from Renee, Sylvia, Saving, Alan and I, that you have come to the show today. And thank you so much for joining us. So Bye for now.